Next up, we have a very special fireside chat prepared for you. It's uh, about a company that has grown a lot during its history. Uh, it has accomplished great things, and we're trying to find out the story behind it from its founder uh, in a fireside chat with uh, Radu Georgescu from Avangate, moderated by Ivan Brezak. So please join me on stage. <laughs> Ivan? No mic? I'll get a mic. <laughs> Thank you. So, Radu. Um, okay, so this is going to be very interesting because it's a good story, right? Um, first of all, let's just check who, who here, and I'm guessing most of you, but let's just check who of you knows what, who Radu is and his work in general. Okay, fair number. I was expecting more, to be honest. Um, so pretty undercover. Yeah, you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. <laughs> so um, to start, for the ones that, that aren't familiar with where you work, can you give us a bit of a background, um, how you got started, what uh, you're doing, and what Avangate, the latest company that uh, you created, has done and is doing? Okay. So yeah, the the, the quick romance story, like you know. Uh, finished mechanical university back in 92, started my first company in 92, uh, sold, I, I mean it was a, like I was programming some applications for AutoCAD, uh, sold it to one of the Romanian uh, distributors of, uh, of Autodesk in Romania in 94, uh, started four other products in 94, one of them got to be international, really successful, sold it, uh, Rav Antivirus sold it to Microsoft in 2003, started other companies in 2003, amongst them uh, sold e-payment to Naspers in two, uh, that became PayU these days uh, in 2010, and then uh, Avangate that was sold a couple of months ago to Francisco Partners in Silicon Valley. So, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> uh, I think I think he needs an applause, right? <laughs> Thank you. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's freaking amazing. So you're sure that's it? There's no other companies because you're you're just <laughs> look. The, the, there are a lot of other companies that failed. Mm -hmm. So a lot of failure comes with the with the success. This is the price. But uh, I enjoyed every single moment and every single failure. That's good. That's good. So um, Avangate specifically, uh, what was it in, in 2005 when you started it and what has it become in the meantime? So Avangito started uh, together with the payment actually by, by a couple of uh, great guys, you know, uh, Black and Diddy for the guys that, that, that know them. Um, great technical guys, you know, they, uh, Black started as a CEO of the company together with the payment and um, it, it was nothing, it was an idea. Uh, the company started um, out of their frustration, so they were part of, of the antivirus, uh, and uh, they wanted to sell international. And at that time, you know, the, the only option for selling an antivirus internationally online was Digital River. Uh, you Especially know, from this part of the world, right? I mean, th they were the big daddy of, of the industry, so the only, the only option to sell online was to go and beg Digital River to accept you. You are a small company from Eastern Europe, they wouldn't care. So they, they saw the opportunity and said, you know, why the hell, why don't you, we build a digital river for Eastern Europe, you know, China, Russia, you know, these parts of the world where, where the big guy, the big American guy wouldn't care about. And um, I, I decided to back them uh, financially and, you know, with strategic advice and whatever needed. And they started the company, they built a great product. Then, uh, you know, we really believe in, in, in stages of companies. So, uh, after the first time, the first period where the, the, the CEO of the company was a technical guy built to build a product, we got in the next stage where the CEO of the company became a, uh, uh, somebody with, uh, with very good commercial acumen. And Carmen took over as, as the CEO, Black, Black uh, remained in the company as the CTO. That's a very interesting approach, you know, and you can see in, in, in the US and wherever, you know, that the founders don't, don't have any issue of becoming, you know, the city of the company and they acknowledge the fact that the company needs to take over, take, uh, to be taken over to the next stage, um, and that's okay. 
so the, the company started to sell, to get promoted, and it became the leader of this industry in, in the eastern side of the world. And then um, we decided that we need to get to the next level, and uh, you know, you need to grow, and the real growth is in, in the US. So uh, a couple of years ago, we relocated the company's uh, headquarters to, to Silicon Valley and uh, got the next level of, uh, of uh, management, which is American and uh, you know, talent from that part of the world in preparation for uh, listing the company to, to, to NASDAQ. And to do this, we needed, we needed a partner, we needed a, a VC investment, so we teamed up with, uh, with 3TS, with Daniel, and uh, got, got money, got uh, expertise, got name. Well, I'm, why not a US VC, since you were entering the US market? US VCs are a bit shy investing in Eastern Europe, so you know you need you need a fund that knows how to move companies from here to there. Need to uh, get a fund that understands that companies in this side of the world are actually valuable, and there is no like you know Russian oligarch kind of uh, doing crazy stuff around here. And this this is a very good part of the world and. They, they need to understand this. Do you think that most US VCs just undervalue companies in Eastern Europe based on not knowing the region, or is it something else? Is it them not coming to Romania or Ukraine or Serbia? They, they, they do undervalue it uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, to start with, they have a lot of opportunities in their part of the world. Uh, in reality, the, the talent there is a bit more knowledgeable on the market, on whatever. So, yeah, I, I guess you need to start with, with, with VCs that are used to understand companies from this part of the world. And you decided to go with a whole new executive team in the yeah. US, right? So, so yeah, we, we, we hired a, a new C-level executive team. Uh, the old executive team stayed with the company and, you know, um, take advantage of a all the ESOPs and all, all the, the good things that they build, a great company that they, they build until now. And um, everybody together, you know, just took the company to the next level. So the company is growing still? Uh, um, not still. I mean, the company is growing 70% per year. Awesome. <laughs> Freaking awesome. Um, but why, why, why didn't you want to take it to the next level? Why exit to then? Why... Why not build even more? So two, two, that's a very good question. So two reasons. One is that I, I really acknowledge what my strengths are and what my weaknesses are. So I, I don't know what to do for the next level. I have no idea how to list a company on NASDAQ, never did it. Uh, so I, I think that you need to let the guys that know how to do this to do a better job for the sake of the company and the people and the better of the world. <laughs> Um, and second, I enjoy starting companies. So what I, uh, look, I, I need to, to enjoy waking up in the morning and I don't enjoy getting a suit and going speaking to 20 million investors on, on the stock exchange kind of thing. Uh, uh, I enjoy just thinking of new products and, and starting, you know, rolling up your sleeves and, and working. Um, plus that, you, you, need, you need at some point in time to let other people, you know, share the, the, the profits and the, and the good. You, uh, the, the, the entrepreneurs that actually win most, I think, are the ones that share, the ones that keep things and, you know, it's only me that, that needs to get everything, the greedy ones, I think that they're going to lose. Why do, you think, why do you think some people do that? Is it a matter of ego, pride, not trusting other people? And why are you so different then? What well, influenced your... I, I wouldn't comment on what others are doing, and I, I'm, I don't think I'm so different. I see a lot of great entrepreneurs that are willing to share and that understand the, the benefit of, you know, um, working in teams, and nobody, nobody knows it all. It, we're not living in a world that where, where I know it all works. I mean, uh, the, the team and teaming up with people that are better than you kind of brings the better things to the table, and you are gaining actually more if you team up with, with good people, with good investment, with, with everything. And you know, everybody needs to win something out of it for you to win. So you mentioned people most of the time. How did you find, who, who made the first 
team of Vanguard and how did you find the best people to do the project? Because it grew very quickly. Um, and of course you had expertise locally in Romania, but the company grew in, in Asia, across Eastern Europe, uh, across the world. Uh, how did you manage that? To start it, I, I didn't manage it. So I was, not in, I, I was never involved in, in the company's operations. So from the very start, there was a proper CEO and um, myself together with my partner, Divakar, and you know, with, a, with the other uh, members of the, of the board, we, we we're just kind of helping strategize and you know, looking from, from up there to the company. So the, C, the, the, the three CEOs of the company uh, created the, the teams and everything. I helped with, with my limited knowledge on, on doing this. But I really believe that if, if you put enough energy and passion and treat people right and give them the opportunity to, to get the energy from the company and be empowered and be happy with what they're doing, and for them to understand that they're participating to, 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 the, to the bigger good kind of thing, you know, things, things, is, things are going great. And then, you know, I, I gave a speech at, on the same stage last year where, where I said exactly the opposite, and then everything is a balance. So you need to be empowered and to, to feel that you are doing great things. And of course, you need to earn money and get benefits. And if you get the right kind of dynamics between those two, yes, you are all set. You, you're, so you invested in the company, and you, of course, participated on a strategic level. Yes. So why, why do you approach building companies in that manner? A lot of investors would just be, of course, hands off, invest their money, help and as from an advisory position, but not be as hands-on as you've been with Van Gate and the other companies you mentioned? Uh, I, I guess I, I do have some knowledge, as limited as it might be, and I think I can help companies. And, you know, it, it's my money there, it's my life, my enjoyment, and, uh, you know, I think it's, it's better to do it. I, I'm not the kind of person laying back, you know, and going by, by an island and just enjoy the sun and wait money to become more and more just by themselves. I, I enjoy going every, every morning to the office and uh, trying to create new products and I enjoy failures as much as I enjoy success. Were there any failures with Vangate through its history? Product failures or things you think you could have done better? Uh, look, the, there are a lot of things any company can do better, but at the end of the day, once you get closure of things, and the closure is good, so that's, that's all set. I mean, it's end of game, you're, you're profitable, that's it. Uh, but, but I had a lot, of, a lot of failure experiences, and I learned from everyone, and you know, my pride is I, that I've never done the same mistake twice. There are so many mistakes I can still do, and I'm still doing, but I, I'm happy to, to do a different mistake every, every time. When, so we mentioned the strategic level of thinking in the company. So Avangate and ePayment were actually quite, were basically the same technology, right, at the, at the beginning? Yep. Just with a different focus. Could you elaborate on that? And yep. So that, that was a very interesting thing. So the, the guys built a technology that basically means we are doing ev uh, uh, technology and processes and everything around the company. That means that we are doing everything behind the buy button. So you, Mr. Software Producer, or whatever, uh, you are creating your website, you are creating your product, you are delivering everything, you have a buy button and whoever comes there, press the buy button and we take over the, the, the process from there. And then this can be applied to cars, to flowers, to software, to SaaS, to whatever, you name it. And uh, we decided together that, look, it's, it's, uh, it's too big, it's too broad. We cannot focus, so we need to focus. And uh, there is some fight of, do we focus geographically? Do we focus vertically? Do we focus like this, like that? How do we focus? And we decided that basically there are two interesting focus 
ways, and one became e-payment, where we focused geographically, so we didn't expand this to the whole world, just to Romania, but we didn't limit the, the scope, so any vertical, flowers, shoes, whatever, can use this product. And the other one became Avangate, which is we focus vertically on software, SaaS, digital goods. And we don't limit geographically, so it would be for, for the global world. And we created the two products, and we, we thought, you know, hopefully one of them is going gonna, is gonna to have success, because we didn't really know which one would be better. Why did it make sense to make two products? Wouldn't it be, since you mentioned focus, wouldn't focus on one product, trying it out, and if not, working on another, have been more sense? What was the, the line of thinking to... Just, just putting, putting your eggs in more baskets, and, uh, you know, you have now two baskets, hopefully one of them is not going to break. Uh, but, but then... Were the projects able to share resources to make it or, Originally, to... yes. I mean, when we were like five people in the company, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know that kind of things when everybody does everything. Uh, but then slowly, slowly, the company kind of starting to, to divide and the team started to divide. And, uh, you know, eventually when ePayment got sold, um, you know, there were two separate teams, different servers, different everything. Um, and, you know, luckily, both of them uh, were successes. So, uh, getting back to getting back to the actual selling of of the company, the exit. Um, I, I I gather from from how you talk about selling the company, it's something that comes very natural to you in the sense that you feel it it just makes sense. Do you think that with a lot of companies, especially in Eastern Europe, people are very very attached to them, right? They they don't want to sell if they don't want to. Why sell? And also, um, do you think that companies should look for sellers? Um, or basically, when should they sell if, if they're a tech company and, and uh, so, at so the stage you were talking about? So I, I, I'm not saying that my philosophy is better. So German philosophy is, you know, I want to, to keep the company for my kids, for my kids' kids, and so on. And that's great. Uh, and I've, I've met entrepreneurs and great companies that live with this philosophy, and that, that's really great. Um, but but I, what, what I enjoy, what I like, is building startups. And I, I really, really enjoy this. And I, look, you, 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 are, you, are, you have an idea one night, and I told you this story, and I want to tell this again, because I, I really feel, and I, I really feel a lot of energy out of it. So you have this idea, and you, have, you are with a friend one night, one piece of paper, one sheet of paper, white paper, and you start elaborating, and there are crazy ideas, and a lot of energy there, and there's nothing just but in your head and, and a piece of paper, and you write things on the paper, and then this becomes in two weeks kind of a business plan. And that's great, you, you build something, and then from the business plan, people start to, to build the actual product, and a couple of months later, you have a product, so look, something that you, it was only in your head, it becomes a real product that people are using, and then suddenly, six months down the line, somebody is paying a couple of dollars for your product, so somebody, th that, this is the best thing, I mean, somebody is valuing your product that much, that, that, so, that he's using to put his money behind your product. This is such a, I mean, it gives you goosebumps. Somebody is trusting you and is giving you money because you created something valuable, and this is great. And then a few months later, you, you, have, you start having users and your company is becoming profitable, and suddenly you build something. Big, brick by brick, you build something. And then, you know, I, I need closure. I need to start all over again, and I need closure, and the only good closure, it's kind of selling the company, which means giving the company to somebody to put it into a better hands, somebody that can get the company further. How can you, how can you be sure you're giving it into, into good hands? Are there any things you, sp you specifically look for in a buyer that shows you, okay, these guys make sense, they'll take care of it, they'll grow it better? So you, 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 can, you can kind of see good buyers and, and bad buyers. I mean, when Microsoft is acquiring your company and your technology, basically, you, you can believe that your technology is going to... I mean, I don't want to get into this debate, Microsoft is good or bad, but... Um, I, I mean, <laughs> um, look, the, the, guys, the, the guys are still there, and, you know, the 30 guys that left 
uh, RAV antivirus and went into Microsoft together with the technology are still there and are the core of the team of Microsoft security even today. And the, the uh, team lead is the one that actually signs off the security, uh, all the security patches and everything for Microsoft. And it's been awarded into Microsoft like one of the best acquisitions that they've done ever. And you know, that's, that is really great. And then you see Francisco Partners acquiring Avangate and you know that Francisco is you know, one of the biggest VCs in the Valley. So would they fail with Avangate? Possible, but is it probable? No, I, I guess they, they're gonna do a great job and the team that, that was building the company is great and the company is growing like hell. And you know, is it gonna be a success? Most probably yes. Am I gonna be proud of it in the next four or five years? Yes. Are they gonna do a better job than me on listing the company on NASDAQ or whatever the plans might, might they have? Absolutely so. Am I gonna use my time in the future better in, in starting up new companies or investing in new companies than I would have done in trying to grow Avangate, which I didn't know from, from now on? Yes. When, when, when did you realize that your time would be better spent building new companies? Was it, was it just a matter of it's more fun and enjoyable for you and it makes more sense? Or was it a logical decision at some point when you saw that you wouldn't be able to, to bring the company to the next level? I guess it was a process. Uh, it was not like an epiphany. So I, it was a process uh, that, that had a, a lot of puzzles, one, one puzzle pieces. One was that I enjoy more and you, know, you need to enjoy what you are doing, otherwise you, you are not efficient. Uh, and second, this is the time where, where most of the value is being, being created at the beginning of the company. So you, uh, you transform zero into everything and that's a lot of growth. Uh, and then the companies are gonna start growing you know, from 1000% into 100%, into 50%, into 20%. The bigger the company is, the more 20% is a great number and you're getting into 10% and then you just hope to grow. Um, so I'd, I'd rather work on 10 companies or 100 companies and try to grow from zero to, to a lot, whatever this a lot means, uh, rather than take a big company further and uh, grow 10% per year. Do you, think, do, you have, do you think that it also has a matter of, it, that it's a matter of geography in the sense that companies just can't grow after a certain level in the region? when they're in Eastern Europe, that you, at some point, if you want to be bigger, you just have to move, for example, to the US? Um, I, I, I guess that uh, there are... Or there, outside Europe, basically. There, there, there are different kind of companies, but in the software, internet, social, big data, this kind of an area, I guess you kind of need to be there if you want to grow big. So I'll challenge you, you know, you give me three big European companies. Oh, Skype, SAP, anyone else? <laughs> Rovio. Like, like, like big, I mean, and, and I'll, really I'll, I'll, I'll give you, and that's Microsoft. why three, because Skype and SAP are, yeah, the, the two big global kind of Microsoft level uh, players. Yandex, maybe? Yandex? Yeah, yeah but we're saying European. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Alibaba and all, all, all guys on the other side, but anyway, but, but then if you, if you look to the US, I mean, you have all the Googles, Yahoo's, Facebooks, Twitters, I, I can, so do you want to be with that guys? I guess so. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a lot of talent there. Uh, not that you don't have talent here, but I mean, yeah. Do you think, so what was the biggest challenge in, in, in selling the company in selling Alan Gate? To, was there a challenge or was it easy for you? <laughs> the, there, there were a couple of challenges and we might want to speak about challenges to relocate a company to the US, okay. which is very interesting. But uh, challenges to exit were a, a couple of them. The biggest challenge was to decide among, among the shareholders that we want to let it go. Because, you know, it's, it's not easy. You have a 70% growing company. It's not easy to decide that, it, it's a mom, it, that there's a moment to let, let go. Uh, second was to, to have the, the, the acquirer understand the, the complexity of the business. Look, the business is, is like, a, it, it's like a global bank. It's really complex business. You have no idea 
how complex it is, and it, it would take about two months of deep due diligence to really understand how hard it is to, to treat 180 taxes uh, over the world, and I don't know how many currencies and languages and credit cards and other pay and and I I mean that is a freaking complicated business. That's why there are only like two or three companies that are doing this all over the world. So it's a headache. <laughs> it yeah. You you mentioned moving moving to the US as, as a challenge. So what are what have been so challenges for th th there are, there are two kind of big challenges to move a company from, from Europe to the US and one, one kind of challenges are internal and the others are external. So internal challenges are, are you know, internal in the company. It's not easy to, to explain to the team. So here you have a team of people that, that did really great. They created a company out of nothing. They created a great company. And suddenly, here's a shareholder coming to them and said, look guys, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a, a new set of, of uh, management. The US guys. And if I was the previous CEO, I'd say, you know, you know <laughs> uh, why? What have I done wrong? And there's nothing, that, there's nothing you did wrong. You did great. And this is not a punishment. This is just getting the company to the next level and it's not necessarily because these guys are better or worse, or so, but they are in the right place and with the right networking and with the right set of knowledge. And to, to get the company to the next level, you need to make this move. And it, it's, it's, it's very educational, it's, it's a lot of training, it's a lot of negotiation, it's a lot of, you know, you, you, you tell some, something today and everybody shake, hands, uh, shake heads and said, yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, it makes sense. And then come back tomorrow, they come back tomorrow and say, but you know, what have I done wrong? And it's only fair. And that, that's a very tough process. And then uh, the other very complicated internal things is to let, to let the new CEO make his own mistakes because the old team tends to do things as they did it before. And the new CEO, to start with, is new, and he doesn't know what the business is about. That is 10,000 miles away and 10 times all difference. So it's going to take a while for him to get accustomed to, 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 the, to the European customs and uh, to, you know, to the business itself. And so on. he's going to make mistakes. And people from the old team are going to come and, and say, hey, look, they're screwing the company. They're doing things wrong. It's not good. So what do you do? Do you go back and say, hey, you don't do right? No, you need to, to just deep, take a deep breath and, and let him do his own mistakes and empower him. And, and, and then it, it, it's pretty late. So there are external things like we, we did go there and try to find the best CEO. And we couldn't because all the great CEOs said, this is a great company, huge opportunity. But you are, you know, you are the Russian oligarch and you decided to come to the US and you know, it's gonna be hard and you are gonna take the company back. And, and that's not someone, good. Did someone actually tell you you yeah. are, seriously? Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. So, you, you, so you need, here, here's where you need, you, you need a proper VC. You, you need a proper corporate governance. And we did have corporate governance ourselves, but the VC helps, and 3TS really helped in, in, in having a name, having a recognized corporate governance, and, and so on. Then you build a, a, a board of directors with local people. I mean, that there are a lot of challenges, and it's not easy. Just to scare the Americans in, in the audience, so what's next for the... Russian oligarch, what's the next company? <laughs> uh, look, so uh, right now, uh, the, the GCAD fund or whatever, I, I don't even know what we are. We are we're investing in companies, we're creating our own companies, we're something. Um, so we're, we're just take, taking a step back, looking, looking at life, and you know, we have a couple of companies that, that we still run and we need to get closure on, this, on, on these ones. And um, yeah, we're looking around and having our own ideas. We're exploring. Um, 
yeah, it's going to be fun. Great. So there, there'll be other news. Ab soon, absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Um, are there any questions for Dadu? And I think you'll get, yeah, there we go. Good morning, uh, I'm Victor from Favorites, and my question is also regarding startups and companies. I know that you are advising a, a, some of them, and can you tell us what's, what, uh, kind of, what are you looking in a startup to be, as, how startups can approach you to be as an, an advisor, and what, are you, what kind of startups are you looking for? So I, I'm, I'm doing you know, the, the, the quick advice. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to give my two cents to everybody. Uh, once it gets to, uh, to invest a little bit of time, then it's a matter of bandwidth. And uh, I'm, I'm looking for successful companies to, to advise. So I, I'm, I'm happy as everybody and uh, anybody in the audience, I'm happy to be part of a success um, as an advisor, investor, or whatever. And uh, once I understand that the company can be successful, then I'm happy to advise. Any other questions? Okay, I'm back. Hey, uh, so you said that you sold Avangate because you didn't know how to IPO and uh, you let guys that know how to do this uh, do it. So for your next company, will you try to IPO or again sell it right before that point? Thanks. Uh, well, that, that's in the future. I have no idea. It, it, it's, it's challenging. So it, the, the, the original plan for, for Avangate was to IPO out ourselves. And this was kind of a challenge for us. Oh, man, you know, we got to do this. That's interesting. But then you, you get to, with your feet down the ground and say maybe it's better to li let somebody better to do it. I don't know. It's an interesting challenge. But uh, the, the fun part is in the startups. I, I don't think so. I don't know. Okay, I think we have one, one more question. Okay, uh, there we go, in the middle. Hi, Florian Buga from Web Valley. So I was wondering, uh, is Bucharest a good place to find resources? And uh, I'm thinking about people, especially when you start a startup. Thank you, that's a tricky question. Um, so. If you want a political answer, I would say this is a great place to find all the resources in the world, and I would never start a company anywhere else than Bucharest. Uh, but just between the two of us and nobody else hearing, I would say that Bucharest is a great technology place. So if you want developers, you are gonna great, you are gonna get great developers, even though the number is not that big. So you may need to fight for them. But you are going to have a big problem, and no disrespect for nobody in the room here, you are going to have a big problem to get proper global management. And uh, that's, I, I personally know only a couple of good managers. One of them is sitting just in front of you. So that there is going to be a huge challenge to get world-class business management. Where do you get them from? Um, do you bring them here, or do you get the uh, tech guys to the managers? I, I guess that's one of the entrepreneurial challenges that, I mean, you solve this problem, you're a great entrepreneur, you're going to have success. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Awesome. So that's, that's a great note to finish on. Thank you, Radu, very much. Thank you so Please, much. Please, a big applause for Radu. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Radu. Thank you, Ivan. That was great.